Good evening. My name is Dita Sean, and I'm a member of the League of Women Voters of the Ann Arbor area, serving all of Washtenaw County. We welcome you to our Zoom forum this evening featuring candidates for Washtenaw County Clerk. These candidates will be on the ballot in the general election on Tuesday, November 3rd. This year, the League of Women Voters is celebrating 100 years of expanding voter rights, educating voters, and shaping and influencing legislation at local, state, and national levels. We are pleased to sponsor these candidate forums. The League works to increase understanding of major public policy issues and works to strengthen and broaden knowledge about our form of government and democracy. While the League is nonpartisan and does not support candidates or parties, we do take stands on issues which we have studied. One of the League's most important goals is to assist voters in making informed choices at the polls, and thus we bring you tonight's program. Our moderator this evening is Sue Lackey, who will explain the format and get us started. Sue? Thanks, Dee. Uh, it's my honor now to introduce two candidates for uh, Washtenaw County Clerk Register of Deeds, Lawrence Kestenbaum and Doris Dean Taylor. Candidate Gary Greiner was invited to participate, but was unable to, unable to attend. Uh, thank you candidates for participating in this forum this evening. We will have the following format for today's forum. Each candidate is going to have an opening statement of up to one minute and a closing statement of up to 90 seconds. In between, I'll ask questions which come from the Ann Arbor community and, and each candidate will have two minutes to answer each question. At appropriate times, a sign on the screen will come up that indicates the time remaining at 30 seconds and at stop. At stop, you will be allowed to finish your thought, uh, finish your sentence, and then your microphone will be muted so we can move on to the next, to the next candidate. Uh, slightly different from many of our forums, Ms. Taylor has opted to participate in tonight's forum by a telephone, so there is no video capacity. We will orally prompt her at the 30 second and stop time. So uh, you'll hear me just very quietly say 30 seconds when we get to that point. The candidates will begin speaking in alphabetical order. And depending on the number of questions, all candidates will have an opportunity to be first to answer questions. We're all ready for your opening statement, Mr. Kestenbaum. Good evening and thank you to the League of Women Voters for sponsoring this forum. It is, uh, uh, it is my pleasure to be here and I am, I am, I am delighted to take part in this. Um, I've been the County Clerk and Register of Deeds in Washtenaw County for close to 16 years. Now I was elected in 04 and re-elected in 08, 12 and 16 and in uh, 08 and 16 I was unopposed. Uh, I have, the, the County Clerk and Register of Deeds is responsible for a wide range of, of, of uh, county functions, including uh, recording deeds, births, deaths, and marriages. Uh, uh, and I'm also the chief election official for the county. Um, and I think in the, in the coming, uh, uh, during the forum, I'll be, I have a chance to discuss uh, uh, how I've handled this position and, and the, the, the accomplishments that I've made in 16 years. Okay, thank you. Uh, Ms. Taylor, your opening statement. Hi. Hi, I'm Doris Team Taylor, and I'm, I'm a write-in candidate for Washtenaw County Clerk Register of Deeds. Um, I have lived in Michigan for at least 30 years, and I lived in Washtenaw County most of that time. And the person who I am, I'm an advocate for all people. And I support many issues out there, like safe, a safe, safe community, safe schools, and better schools. And there's other issues that I strongly support too. And other than that, I am um, ready to go. Thank, thank you, Ms. Taylor. Um, thank you, candidates. And now to the questions. As a reminder, I will re read each question once only, unless you ask me to repeat it. Don't hesitate to do so if you want me to, to repeat the question. Uh, tonight, we'll start with Ms. Taylor for the first question. 
Uh, Ms. Taylor, what is the number one key issue that drove you to seek election in 2020, and how do you expect to address that, uh, that issue? Well, the number one key issue is basically, basically us to, um, I have so many, but I'm going to say vote, voting, um, voting depression and stuff like that. That's the number one. Voting depression. Did you hear me? Oh. Yes. And how, and how I'm going, and your question was how I'm going to, um, would you repeat the question, please? Uh, what is the key issue that drove you to seek election in 2020, and how do you expect to address that issue? Oh, voter suppression. How I expect to address that issue is basically make sure that uh, people have uh, sufficient time to vote and they have access to it to vote because you know some people do not have the internet service and some people move around so we got to we got to uh, secure make sure make sure they can register wherever they at like this thing they got going like you can register once you're at the site or something like that or else you can um you know register over the phone or over the internet so that's what i want to do i'm gonna make sure i'm gonna support issues like that i will Okay, thank you, Mr. Kestenbaum. Hello, um, I'm obviously I'm seeking re-election this year uh, as uh, as the incumbent. The uh, I I was I first ran for county clerk in 2004, uh, and uh, I did so because it was a um, the office really combines a lot of things that I'm interested in, uh, ranging from uh, election administration to preservation of records, uh, and and. Uh, the, uh, the jury system, the court system. Um, and so I, I've been, uh, uh, I think that I've done uh, an, an excellent job with it and I, I would like to continue with it. Now, the, uh, the issue that, uh, that, uh, that uh, Ms. Taylor has, has mentioned in terms of elections, uh, obviously I'm deeply involved in, in running elections. I'm the chief election official for the county and, the, uh, and voter suppression is absolutely an issue. Uh, and uh, I think that the best defense against voter suppression is a county clerk with deep election experience. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Kestenbaum, the next question is yours. Uh, each election brings a host of challenges to local clerks. This year, Washtenaw County clerks have expressed concerns with finding an adequate number of poll workers, securing safe polling places, road closures that limit ballot drop-off locations, uh, all of them are concerned about post office delays, and just to complicate things further, courts are still ruling, ruling on what ballot, ballots should be counted, uh, when they should be counted, and the legislature is acting on when clerks should begin the tabulation process. How would you ensure that local clerks, particularly those very rural part-time clerks, are up to date on these really rapidly changing conditions? Well, we we work we work very closely. There's 26 city and township clerks in Washtenaw County, and my office has worked closely with them. You know, really since I've started. Uh, and the uh, we putting on elections in Michigan. It's a collaborative process between local clerks and the county clerks. Uh, you know, we provide the ballots and the tabulating, and they they're the ones uh, who hire, uh, choose and hire the election workers, the poll workers. Uh, most of them come to my office to be to be trained. Uh, the uh, a recruitment of poll workers is ongoing and is uh, being being pushed at the state level, uh, uh, at the county level by my office, and also in each individual jurisdiction. Several of the jurisdictions now say that they think that they have enough poll workers for, for November, but there are others that don't. And if you're if you're if you're listening to this and considering becoming a poll worker, uh, I urge you to consider it. And uh, you would you don't necessarily have to work here in Washtenaw County or in the or in your local area. You can go to a different area that might need poll workers more. Um, the uh, the state and the county are also involved with with funding uh, um, uh, you know additional tabulators, personal protection equipment for poll workers in precincts, uh, and uh, uh, I mean it's a complicated uh, uh, system. I'm I'm hopeful that we will have the legislation and the lawsuits resolved before election day. Uh, and and uh, uh, but it's always with elections things are always changing and so the uh, and it's something that's it's part of the life of being an election official and the uh, uh, and we have an excellent set of 
of city and township clerks in this county. I'm very proud of them. Okay, thank you, Ms. Taylor. Okay, could you repeat the question, please? Each election brings a host of challenges to local clerks. This year, Washtenaw County clerks have expressed concerns with finding an adequate number of poll workers, securing safe polling places, and road closures that limit access to ballot drop-off locations. All are concerned about post office delays, and just to complicate things further, courts are still ru ruling on what ballots should be counted and the legislature acting on when clerks should begin the tabulation process. How would you ensure that local clerks, particularly very part-time rural clerks, are up to date on these rapidly changing conditions? First of all, I, re I would recruit people. You got to recruit the people, continuous process. And that is so year round, not just at the election time, because, because you know, you got to build your foundation and you want to establish that. And that's the way you can uh, maintain and you, you can accomplish your goals. And I can help the, you know, make the clerk feel like they got some support out there. And also, I would go to their areas and talk to the clerks in general and ask them what ideas that they have that I can, that we can work together, you know, and bring about some changes and things like that, that will make it easier on them and, and the people. And so, and other than that, I would also um, make sure I do that, like, you know, not just for this around election time. I would do that like every six months. And we would have a meeting and we would talk about these issues because this is a problem because we have local election that's going on, not just the president and just a big election right now. And so that's, you know, that's what I would do. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Taylor, you have the next question. Uh, okay. Senate, Senate Bill 757, allowing clerks to begin the absent ballot tabulation process the day prior to election, was recently passed by the Senate uh, with broad bipartisan support. Secretary of State Benson has expressed concerns about both the length of time available to count mail-in ballots and the sunset provisions. Clerks have articulated a mixture of opinions on the legislation, but many seem to feel it does not go far enough. What is your position on this legislation? And if changes cannot be made in a timely manner, should the governor sign the legislation? Ms. Taylor. Well, I, um, for as that part go, I, I believe like for us, the gov I, will, I won't say for the governor should sign it or not, because I believe in the go governor is, you know, have a clear idea of what she goes and what, what she needs to do at that point. My part on the on the on the uh, on the legislature that they passed is that it's not perfect, and you know, and everything you try is like first is a trial. It's a, it was a tri first a trial and error thing, so we can try it and see does it work. And then if it doesn't, you know, you know, you got to keep um what I'm on what I'm saying. You got to keep um checking. You got to keep checking and testing and get it to fit and correct it. You know, because it's not something you want to just throw away, but it's a, it's a step forward. So, you know, that's pretty good. Okay, thank you. Mr. Kestenbaum. Uh, I, I definitely very much agree that the governor should sign the bill, and I do appreciate the efforts of former Secretary of State Ruth Johnson, who's now a member of the state Senate, uh, in putting this forward and getting the uh, Senate to adopt it. Frankly, we uh, election officials had very low expectations that the legislature was going to provide any help to the situation. And uh, I know that the bill only provides for starting the day before, uh, but I think that in, in almost every jurisdiction, that is going to be plenty of time between the, the day before and then starting at 7 a.m. On, on election day. Uh, I think that this is going to be uh, to make things a little bit easier. And I do appreciate uh, uh, the bipartisan support that this bill got, and uh, uh, and I you know look forward to implementing it. I, I'm um, it's really there's really not time to uh, go back and rewrite it or persuade people to come up with a different bill. Uh, I think it's it's got to, we've got to move forward. Okay, thank you, uh, Mr. Kestenbaum. The next question is for you. One of the clerk's functions is to serve as one of five statutory members of the Reapportionment Commission for the County Board of Commissioners Districts. Uh, although the Citizens Redistricting Commission uh, did not directly address county apportionment, 
Are there elements from that proposal that you would encourage your colleagues to consider as you determine the configuration of the County Board of Commission districts after the 2020 census? Uh, redistricting has been, has always been an interest of mine uh, going back uh, many, many years since my, my childhood even, uh, when there was a, uh, I was reading about uh, in in uh, a city in Northern Ireland that was that was gerrymandered in such a way that uh, uh, the one group was the majority, the other group had a majority of the city council seats. And I, you know, it, I think it was, as a 12 year old, I was thinking, how could, how is that possible? And then I, I laid out a, a piece of newsprint with X's and O's and, and discovered that it wasn't just possible; it was easy. Uh, so uh, with redistricting, I think that there's a uh, we always have to bear in mind, and I think that this, this oftentimes gets short shrift, is that the public has an interest uh, not just in the districts that are created and, and, and what, the, what the partisan balance might be in a, in a particular area, but, the, uh, uh, but in having districts that are, that are simple and comprehensible enough for the people who are running in them, for the voters who are voting in them. Uh, you know, the, the, uh, uh, I've taken part in, in, in redistricting processes uh, a, a number of times in different, in different roles. 10 years ago, I was on that five member commission to redraw the, the districts for the county board of commissioners. And I'm very proud to say we had a unanimous vote and we had uh, a set of districts which were very simple and straightforward and easy to understand. And I'm, I'm, I'm proud of that, of what we did then, and I'm hoping that we can do something similar this time. Thank you, Ms. Taylor. Well, I would have to, I would have to uh, research this uh, issue to give a true assessment. You know, it must be, it, it must be fair and not to the disadvantage of the people. But I will definitely research to make a uh, determination. And on that, I can add just one thing that I know for sure is that when you do redistrict, I don't want to take, like, say, for instance, you got uh, 50,000 people. I don't want to bag 40,000 people in one area. And, they, and that just may count, like, I'll say 40 uh, but, uh, red birds over here. And then I got 10 bluebirds over here. And, and they got more power than these people. So, so, you know, it's like an e equality thing. You got to keep it equal some kind. You got to get a balance. And um, you got to work the numbers. And so I can work the numbers. Okay. Okay, thank you. Um, Ms. Taylor, staying with reapportionment for a moment, state law allows the apportionment commission to establish a board that has from five, a board of commissioners that has from five to 21 members. Could you share your thoughts on what you think the optimum size is for the Washtenaw County Board of Commissioners and why? Well, my my side, since Washtenaw County has grown and it's getting, you know, the number of people is, is, is gone. It's more people here. So that number to, to me, it should be, it should, I think it should increase at least one because right now, it's not accommodating everybody. You want to count all. You you want to be able to uh, serve all the people and not to have people working up on the stress. Because I believe you know the less stressed people are, the better we able to do our job and stuff. And so that's significant for me. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Kustenbaum. Well, it, when when we did this last time, uh, we it, we we were dealing with the constraint that. Uh, there is uh, the general, I don't know, the folklore or the, the political consensus of Washtenaw County is that Ann Arbor should have its districts and the rest of the county should have its districts. And in other words, the Ann Arbor uh, districts should be just Ann Arbor. Uh, and Ann Arbor's population is approximately very close to one third of the county. And so that meant that in order to do that, we had to have a number of districts divisible by three. Uh, and we looked at 12 and we looked at nine and we ended up with nine. Um, the uh, uh, looking at the populations of the different areas of the county as they as they have showed up in, in um, population estimates in the meantime, there has not been much of a shift. Uh, we could end up with districts very similar to the ones we have now. Um, the but the other side of this that uh, that is uh, and I expect that you know there's there's part of this commission is there's the Democratic chair and there's the Republican chair, so you have both parties represented, and right now. We have nine districts. Every one of them has elected a Democrat in the last election. 
uh, and the uh, which means I mean there's a certain and you know, ideological um, you know, narrowness to having a board with just one party, uh, and which means that and and the districts are not gerrymandered. They're they're really very straightforward. And what it means is that the, that the most conservative one ninth of the county is not conservative enough to elect a Republican. Um, and so the, I expect that the Republican uh, on the commission will be advocating for a larger number with the idea that the more you have, the more likely you, you are to elect one or two Republicans. Uh, and I'm, I'm open to that. Um, but uh, uh, again, it's, uh, the board as it exists is, is efficient with nine members. And I did notice that uh, when I was on the board, they had 15 members, and it was reduced from 15 to 11 at that time, and five people uh, were, were basically put off the board, including myself. I didn't run for re-election. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Kestenbaum. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Uh, changing gears just a little bit, uh, COVID-19 has forced governments to implement a lot of new procedures uh, and bring in new technologies in order to continue to provide needed public services. What changes do you see remaining in a post-pandemic world? Uh, I, 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 this is my question, right? Okay, uh, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm seeing. I think what we're, we, we, we are the shift toward voting absentee in Michigan. I think is going to be permanent. I think that that in the going forward, we're we're going to continue to have the majority of people. Uh, vote by absentee ballot even after the pandemic is over. And I think that that's a good thing uh, uh, for the reasons that I, I think I mentioned that the um, uh, oh. absentee voters have more of an opportunity uh, to examine the candidates, uh, to do their research, to watch forums like this one uh, and, uh, uh, and make their decisions even on, you know, on relatively obscure offices like county clerk. Uh, as opposed to uh, uh, having to do that all in one in one standing moment in the polling place, uh, and so I think that that going forward that you know we we have I mean uh, we ask a lot of our voters in in Michigan. Uh, in, if you live in Ann Arbor, you have uh, a total of 97 different officials who are who are theoretically directly responsible to you. 97 different officials to vote on, uh, and and that's a huge job. For uh, you know, you 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 just have the ballot in front of you. And you're trying to figure out what to do with library board and school board and community college board and things like that. So uh, voting absentee, I think, is um, uh, is 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 helpful in basically helping people confront that vast edifice of political uh, structure. Okay. Thank you, Ms. Taylor. Yes, could you repeat the question, please? COVID-19 has forced governments to implement new procedures and bring in new technologies in order to continue to provide necessary public services. What changes do you see remaining in a post-pandemic environment? Oh, what changes do I see remaining? Correct. Right now, right now, you know, funds me saying something remaining like that because this uh, voting, this absentee voting thing, I think a lot of people like that. Some people like it. Then you got certain people that, you know, like to go to the poll and, you know, don't don't like the paperwork thing. They just go to the poll and they hey and they done. So that's that's like to me, I don't think it's I think it's gonna increase the number of absentee ballots. That's what is gonna remain, you know, like that because the law they changed the rules and laws and stuff to allow more people to vote absentee. But what we will need to is what we need to do is put a strategy in place that will ensure that the voters will be able to vote in a crisis such as this. So action plans need to be de designed, and that's what we need to do, because we don't need to come up to another situation like this. I mean, I can go around and knock on doors and get a ballot signed because of this and that stuff. You know, I know it's God's got this, but, you know, hey, we need to be better prepared, because this really going to prepare us, I think. Okay, thank you. Um, Ms. Taylor, the position of clerk register touches on all parts of county government. Other than mm -hmm. elections, what do you see as the most important part of the job? What issues do you see ad that need addressing in that function? And what specific actions would you take to improve that function? And can you be specific? 
what do I see need to be addressed in that part? See, right there in that part, uh, what the Washington County clerk does in their job and stuff, I know it's a big storage place for records, but to me, for the storage place for vital statistics and other issues, other records and stuff like court records and stuff like that. So my part is I think it needs to be um, the, I think that um, you, you, what you could, what needs to be changed or done right now is that it more, the job needs to be more defined. And I think the um, person that get in this position need to do more, be more active and get information out to the people, you know, better. Let them know see, that this information there is available. Just like this, uh, what is this, uh, when you, uh, the the voting thing, like the say for instance, when the ballots get count and stuff, you got a discrepancy in the numbers and stuff, people want to just throw it aside. We need some kind of way, get away, get an issue, get something we can do that won't cost so much money, but do not a candidate the opportunity to uh, recount their balance and stuff and, and not feel like, hey, I'm, you know, I'm wasting money, you know. So that's what I think. Okay, thank you. Um, this will be our last question, uh, Mr. Kestenbaum. Uh, after the recession of 2009, county government was forced to initiate staff reductions and cuts in hours of service, uh, including, excuse me, including closing many functions between Christmas and New Year's and for extended holiday periods. Many experts are predicting that COVID-19 may have a longer and deeper impact on government finances. How would you go about ensuring that prompt public access to clerk and register functions were maintained under reduced staffing and or hours? Well, I, I think that um, uh, you know, we have been, uh, we have been again, very uh, active in maintaining access to services during the entire crisis. And I expect that, uh, that we will continue to do so. The, uh, uh, all of the things that the County Clerk and Register of Deeds do, uh, these are all, uh, uh, practically all of them are mandated services that the county is required by a law to provide. Um, and the, uh, uh, we are, are uh, uh, it's really very uncommon for a county clerk's office to be closed between Christmas and New Year's. That was, uh, uh, there, there are, are, you know, again, we're dealing with all the deaths and births and marriages that happened during that time. And De December is a, is a, is a very, uh, um, High frequency time for, for, for weddings to take place. Um, the uh, uh, I should say in response to that that last question that you didn't ask me that the the um, uh, the county clerk and the register of deeds are two two separate positions which were combined in Washtenaw County uh, back in the 1980s uh, and it's a uh, 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 and it's you know there are many different parts of of, of the of the position. One of the things that is uh, likely to be a, a an issue ongoing is the is the question of having representative jury pools. In other words, to have uh, uh, juries uh, in 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 courts in Washtenaw County and in other counties uh, be rep you know, basically have uh, uh, the jury the jury selection be a jury of the of the of the person's peers. Um, and the uh, there's been dissatisfaction with the unrepresentativeness of the of the jury system of the juries. That are that are selected, and the uh, I have taken I have been in Lansing. I have taken an, an active role in in, in legislation uh, to to work on that problem, and I I regret that there has been so little progress made on it in, in recent years. Okay, Mr. Kestenbaum, I do apologize for that, um, and I thank you for stepping back and and answering that question. Uh, and now I believe that this two recession 2009 question goes to Ms. Taylor. Would you like to have me read this again? Would you please? Thank sure. you. Yeah. After the recession of 2009, county government was forced to initiate staff reductions and cuts in hours of service, including closing many functions between Christmas and New Year's and for extended holiday periods. Many experts are predicting that COVID-19 may have a longer and deeper impact on government finances. How would you go about ensuring that prompt public access to clerk and register functions was maintained under reduced staffing and or hours? 
Oh, I would work closely with the staff, reevaluate needs, and provide support, be an advocate, and ensuring customers' needs, the customers' needs. Okay, thank you. Uh, we're now going to go to closing statements. And Mr. Kestenbaum, we will begin with you. Again, uh, thank you all for uh, sponsoring this forum. I do appreciate it very much. And uh, I, I'm, I'm sure the voters who are watching this are also appreciative uh, in this and all of the other legal women voters forums that are they're going on. Uh, uh, and this is a, a valuable service. Um, I've been county clerk, as I said, for four terms. Uh, I, I think that I've accomplished a lot. I have run the office in an efficient way. I have now uh, only about half the staff I did when I started. Uh, the, we have basically, the county is growing, but we have met the county's needs with a leaner operation and more efficient operation. Um, and, the, uh, uh, and I participated with the other county officials. Uh, you know, County government is not structured for efficiency, and it only works as well as it does because of the people who, uh, uh, the people who, who are uh, who are in those positions, uh, who are in the leadership of the uh, of the county, and the uh, and we have the county has a top-notch AAA bond rating, which reflects very good financial management as well as, uh, frankly, the affluence of the area, and that we have the resources in this area. Uh, so the um, uh, again, I want to remind you all that uh, that we do face a lot of issues in elections with with uh, with voter suppression, and that uh, as I keep saying, the best defense against that is to have a county clerk with deep election experience. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Mr. Kestenbaum. Uh, Ms. Taylor, your closing statement. Okay, first of all, I want to say thank to you all for for allowing us this time to uh, express our opinions on things. But um, what I would do is, like, as the Washington County Clerk, I would bring integrity, dedication to ensure that your needs are met. I would utilize the county clerk position to bring about long overdue changes. Some of those bylaws have changed. And, a true, and I'm a true advocate for the residents of Washington County. And I'm a, I would appreciate the people vote. That's it. Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you both for participating uh, in this session this evening. And again, thank you for your patience and understanding in my, uh, uh, my, my uh, 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 screw up there. Um, I will now turn this back to Dee Deshaun for closing comments. Dee? Okay. Thank you, Sue. The League thanks the candidates for participating in tonight's forum and to those people who contributed questions as well. All of our candidate forums will be available by streaming on your computer or smartphone. Go to the website lwvannarbor.org and look for the link to the programs. In addition, the forums can be viewed on community television network, CTN. Please urge your friends and neighbors to watch these forums too. As was mentioned, there are many items, many uh, candidates on the, the ballot, and so it's good to have information. And for additional nonpartisan information on candidates and ballot issues, go to vote411.org, the League's voter re resource guide, which covers local, state, as well as federal candidates and current proposals that will appear on your ballot. As a reminder, as we heard earlier, all Michigan re registered voters may cast an absentee ballot. The most important thing to make sure that you vote in the November 3rd general election. Thanks again to our candidates. Good evening.